Hi, I'm Paul Mattis, the Vice President of Global Cloud Group here at Veeam, and my guest today is Mark Rosinovich. Mark, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Mark Rosinovich. I'm Chief Technology Officer of Microsoft Azure. Mark, we're incredibly thrilled to have you here. Well, thanks. thanks so much for being here. No, thanks for inviting us. How's your, uh, how's your VeeamOn experience it's been? been? It's been fantastic. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? yeah, from starting from the keynote this morning and then we're, uh, it, partnering with you on some interviews. Uh, it's been great, yeah. it's been great. So, um, just a few questions that, uh -huh. that I wanted to, to get your opinion on. So, coming out of Build, you had the big Build conference uh, a little bit ago. What's got you most excited uh, about Azure and what's happening there? Uh, that's a tough question because there's a ton <laughs> of things. Um, there And we had a bunch of big announcements at Build. I'll, I'll highlight one which I think really represents a game changer for public cloud and kind of represents where the puck is going with risk, with customer expectations about what they get out of a cloud provider and that is the launch of Cosmos DB, mm -hmm. which is a geo-replicated, NoSQL database infrastructure that brings some first to the public cloud. One of them is this turnkey being able to replicate data with different consistency levels across multiple regions in the public cloud. As you know, coming from a space of availability and disaster yeah, recovery, this is crucial. Huge. And Cosmos DB does it not just with eventual consistency or strong consistency that most solutions out there provide, but three levels in the middle that let developers tune their workload with the right trade-off of performance versus availability. Plus it comes with four SLAs. We consider that the, the cover, you know, the, the full suite of SLAs around latency, throughput, consistency, and availability. And no other cloud service in the public cloud offers no, that with really strict SLAs around very low latency that, replication. That's me. And that's different from the Cosmos DB that's the Cosmos that's internal to Microsoft. Yeah, that's correct, correct. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cosmos DB internal only. And actually the the public uh, realization of Cosmos is Azure Data Lake Analytics. Okay. So that which is a, another public service that we launched last year. Awesome. So we, you talked today a lot about um, about hybrid cloud and and sort of how Microsoft where Microsoft's going on a number of different fronts with with Azure. Um, talk to me a little bit about uh, the competitive landscape uh, that you see and how how you like to position Microsoft differently than than any of the competitors. Yeah. So. Um, we look at differentiation in a few different ways. One is just the core pillars of what we kind of call the Microsoft Cloud. And I'll talk about in a second what Microsoft Cloud is, but trusted, global, and hybrid. And I think we have differentiation across all three of them, and this certainly I think the combination itself is unique as a result. First, talking about trusted, we've got over 56 certifications on our public cloud services, and we have uh, the broadest suite of services covered by the core certifications that many businesses require like FedRAMP and ISO mm -hmm. and SOC and PCI and HIPAA of any public cloud provider out there. And so and that goes along with the security that underlies the ability to go get those certifications. Global, we've just announced just this morning, in fact, two new regions in South Africa where the first public cloud, a big hyperscale public cloud to go into South Africa and serve the, serve the continent and that brings the total number of regions we got to 40, which is uh, has a significant lead over any of the other hyperscale or public clouds in terms of, of global coverage, which of course is extremely important for latency and for data sovereignty. And then finally, hybrid, which is a topic of our, a lot of our discussions yeah. today. Uh, Azure and Microsoft have been focused from the start on hybrid, realizing from the beginning, even if there's a, a pull to the cloud that the world's going to be in a hybrid state for a long time, at least much of the world. And we want to help customers manage their journey to the cloud by whatever way we can. That means infusing all of our products with real ground truth of hybrid capability from things like building it right into SQL Server, ability to stretch up in databases up into the cloud, to operations management suite, ability to manage hybrid environments with a single pane of glass, with uh, the traditional IT management and security dashboards that keep you on top of what's going on. And then, of course, Azure Stack, which is a very differentiated offering, ability to take Azure and extend it in your own data center, ability to have an application platform that is the cloud application platform offered by a public cloud like Azure and, and use the, that same model on-premises, and then also be able to take care advantage of the public cloud ecosystem in your on-premises infrastructure because the Azure Marketplace also stretches down into Azure Stack. Yeah. 
Azure Stack's been a long time in coming. It's been yeah. uh, it's hard. It's, it's been quite an evolution. Hard, tell, yeah. tell me a little bit about how, how that how that evolved over time because I, I know it, it, you know we had CPS a bunch of years yeah. ago and then it's a few steps. Tell me how 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 that. Yeah. So our first step in towards this vision of consistency across on-prem and public cloud was something called Azure Stack. And Azure Stack was a, a couple of components from public Azure, including the portal and basically app service, so web apps, ability to run that on your own right. infrastructure. But what we recognized very quickly is that customers wanted much more of a surf, consistent surface area so that they could actually build comprehensive applications that made use of not just right. uh, those kinds of applications, but also infrastructure, right. storage, and then even higher level PaaS services. And so we started embarked on, let's get uh, consistent implementation of Azure that can actually run outside of our data centers in a customer data center in a very small footprint, not require the kind of massive scale that, that the container, we've designed you're not going to back the container yeah. up into the, that's exactly the data right. center yeah. and away and, you go. And so that's a multi-year effort of getting those services scoped down and in appliance basically form where they can be even managed by somebody other than us because we're managing our public cloud services and also be able to scale down to that footprint and then having this software delivery model that supports us keeping that environment consistent with the public cloud and, yeah. and working with OEMs. We've got three OEMs three, going out right. the door uh, to support this, this appliance form factor in various sizes. And so lots of moving parts, um, and we're really excited to have that coming yeah. up. Yeah, challenging work and great work. I know there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of buzz in our service provider community about what Azure Stack might represent for them, and so um, good, good uh, progress there. Um, you and I were talking earlier today about um, the, the adoption of cloud and how rapidly this is happening. Um, and I, on my uh, presentation today, said I, I believe that it's happening faster than anything I've seen in, in information technology history in the past couple decades. Why do you think that is? What's, what's behind that? Yeah, I think the big things are agility. The, I mean, actually, if I have to pick one thing, it's agility. The ability to go and launch applications in minutes, if you've got the application designed, in minutes, that uh, allows this fast time to business solution that wasn't it's just not possible with the kind of so software that you've got running in on-premises infrastructure. And that's made possible with this multi-tenant elastic infrastructure plus this software as a service delivery on top of it, and infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. And that is really the big motivator. Of course, cost also comes into play and the, and the cloud does offer big opportunities to save on costs over what you can do on-premises. But, and the elasticity, what I mentioned, goes along a long way towards both the agility and cost aspect yeah. of, of uh, the value proposition. So I think all three of those things. So being able to match the velocity of, of IT with business agility, cloud's the only exactly. real way to yeah. get there. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's a, and it, it really is one of those things where you have first movers starting to take advantage of those technologies, and that essentially forces everybody else to follow along because they're being out innovated and you know, by this competitor that's taking advantage of those agile, yeah, exactly. agility, right? Exactly. Last question yeah. I have for you. Um, fantastic advancements in um, machine learning and predictive analytics built into Azure. Um, how do you see or do you see how that might impact what Veeam does as a business? Do you see the application of those sorts of technologies to something, uh, something in the vein of availability mm -hmm. and data protection? Um, yeah, absolutely. So first, I think, um, you know, one of the, the value propositions of really the next step in cloud is machine learning, artificial intelligence, yeah. and you see Microsoft make big efforts to democratize it and fuse everything we do with yeah. machine learning and artificial intelligence. We're using machine learning internally to, to keep track of the availability of our infrastructure and respond to it automatically. So this, we really see no space that won't be touched with machine learning. Everything will be touched. So availability, you talk about availability, like being able to detect changes in patterns of behavior. When we roll out software, we're watching and having machine learning algorithms learn about the way that the system behaves and then notify us when it starts to see things diverge that might be indicative yeah. of some kind of a problem. And so you're going to see that kind of approach of we don't have to sit and manually twiddle knobs and set alerts thresholds and you know hope that we're not going to be overwhelmed with false positives or miss the, the one that is the, the critical exactly. one that brings around our app. Um, the machine learning algorithms are going to figure it out for us. That's awesome. 
Mark, thank you so much for making the time today. Again, we really, really yeah, appreciate well, it. We appreciate the opportunity, Paul. Thank yeah, you so thanks much. Thanks for inviting us.